It's even odder for me to be in Max um, because uh, you're talking about the, the, the late 70s and the early 80s. I remember when the locals remember when the 8 bus was stopped coming to Dalkey uh, and uh, that must have been about 1981, 82. Of course, the reason they said was Max. <laughs> the rarely use of Max and all that carry on. But it gives me great pleasure to talk, <laughs> to talk about uh, to introduce uh, Frank's work, uh, not because I know anything about art, I don't, but um, Frank approached me just before the summer and said, you know, if you're around, would you, would you open this exhibition about money? But not money as in finance, but money and how it's used and what we think of it and how people express it. And he said, and in general, just say a couple of words about the economy. Now, it always strikes me very odd about the economy is that the economy is only our stories. It's only actually our experiences. When people talk about the economy, they go on television and they use you know, numbers and GDP and inflation, all that stuff. But in actual fact, what they're trying to do is tell the story of all of us. And the interesting thing, when the economy booms, it's only because collectively, people get a little bit giddy and kind of tend to influence each other. And then people go into depressions and ultimately what, what happens in the economy is an exercise in human nature. But ultimately, all of economics are stories. And maybe the reason I got into economics, it's funny you, you did mention Max in the late 70s and early 80s, was uh, when I was growing up around here, um, in the early 80s, when I was a, a young for late 70s, my father lost his job, which wasn't supposed to happen to people who lived up in Savile Park Road. And um, my dad, and I remember it because I was about 10 or 11 at the time, my father put on a suit and pretended to go to work for an entire year because he was so ashamed of being the only dad on the road who had the job. And I remember asking him when I got older, like, where did you go? Because, you know, you know the way parents try to always disguise from their children what's going on? But you sense it. Even when you're nine or ten, you sense that something's going on that isn't right. And I used to ask my dad, where did he go? Uh, this is when, you know, when I was about 20. And he said he used to go to British Spain and walk on the beach on his own or he used to go to Sally Gap and walk on his own. And the reason he walked on his own because he wouldn't meet anybody from around here that would identify him as being redundant. And you think, what does that do to somebody over their life? It profoundly changes them in, a, in an emotional way. And, and I believe that maybe, you know, if we could think of economics a little bit more through the context of what happens to people when economies turn down, and what happens to people when economies turn up, and the extent to which economics is about emotions, and it's about people, and it's about families, and it's about fathers, and about mothers, and brothers, and sisters, and children, and that's what it is. It's about stories. So when Frank asked me to talk a little bit today, and I looked at the artwork, and I talked to Frank, what it is, it's Frank's story. It's Frank's interpretation of what is happening, and what has happened, and what might happen in the future. And that, that story is all the backstory of Frank's life, and his experiences, and the people he's met, and how he sees the world, and how the world sees him. And if you look at what he's done here, first of all with the billion euro house, which was, not only was it viral, but I made a documentary in Australia in 2011 and it, had, it was talked about there by Aussie producers. It was one of the few things that they remembered from the Irish crisis was your house, Frank. Yeah. Which is about, but, again, but again, isn't that fantastic? Because it's not about, you know, who did what or which, what happened, some bank or whatever. What people remember 
is some guy decided to go to the central bank and spoof to the central bank, okay? He got an idea about shredded money from confetti at somebody's wedding a couple of years previously. He went to the central bank, he said he was doing an installation, they said fair enough. And this, what I love is the, the subversive nature of the small lie, you know? Because all of us, you know, everyone tells white lies, and the subversive nature of the white lie is great. And I speak as a former economist in the Central Bank, so I know how difficult it is to pull the wool over their eyes. And then he goes and he says, okay, what am I going to do here? So we have a housing crash, and this housing crash is about money, and the money that was spent, the money that was borrowed, the money we didn't have, the money, what they came looking for, the money we didn't have, and all that sort of stuff. I'll make a house. And I'll make a house and we'll see what happens. And not only do you see what happens, suddenly it becomes world famous. But again, Frank, what you're doing is you're telling a story. And that story clicks with people. It gets inside people's heads. So what we have now is, four years on, I think it's fair to say, is art that was in the house, then work that was done when Frank was in Thailand in 2010, 2011. And what it is, is one man's story through the mechanism of the confetti of money, which I love because money is only in our heads. It's only about trust. If you trust that it's worth something, it is. If you don't, it's not. And the idea that the confetti of money, and what, what, what he has here, and I, I'd urge you all to go around and look at all the different pieces. It's international, it's domestic, it's local, it's some big picture stuff, some little picture stuff. But again, I come back to that basic issue which is that if we talk to each other, everybody has a story, our own personal story of the last five or six years in this country, or the last 10 years in this country. Things that went wrong, things that went right, things that if I had my time again, I would have done differently, things that if I could actually change it, I would change it. But if you really think about the last five or six years, it is a collection of individual stories. Some of them, you don't want to revisit, some of them you're quite happy, some of them maybe we've got over and you can laugh at them now a couple of years later, or some are still very traumatic. But ultimately that's all it is. And I would like to congratulate you, Frank, for making economics and finance a little bit more interesting than the stuff I have to do with every day. And I'd like us all to put our hands together for Frank Buckley. Um, yeah, I was talking about being strange at McDonald's. I shouldn't be here, I'm barred. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was 78, 79, but I'm not barred. It's ironic the way things turn around. But anyway, you know, I really like um, the way David expressed, expressed uh, the art on the walls. I won't say they're my art. Again, it's, it's my experience. But it's other people's experience as well. I knew nothing about money. The only thing I knew about money was I hadn't got it. <laughs> you know, that was the only thing I knew. And, you know, that's, it's different from me now because of my experience. And, you know, when I did go to the central bank that time, you know, it was a white lie. There was a difference between 20, 37 feet and 37 square meters. I just clicked the wrong button on the, on the, on the, on the, on the computer. Um, but it made a massive difference because I was able to build a house and I was able to express what I felt about what was happening to people through money, through the value we put on money. As some people know in this room, uh, a good friend of ours who passed away um, put a lot of emphasis on money and in the end it really it killed them, basically, you know? And, and I know people know have many stories about this and, you know, all the, all the, all the people that sort of you know, decided to check out this life because of a piece of paper. And that's the way I see it now, you know? And David is dead right. It's the value we put on it, you know? Um, I know I have, to, I have to get up in the mornings and, and wake up in, the, in, in this environment, you know? But it's my environment that I have to wake up to. And it's my idea of the environment I want to live in. And I have that choice, you know? And everybody does have that choice. But everybody don't, doesn't know that they have that choice. And, you know, this emphasis that we put on with, with the economies and all the, all the stuff that we need, cars, we need houses, we, you know, why would you need two cars, you know? Well, I had two cars, you know? I could only drive one at a time. <laughs> but I had two cars, you know? I needed a house because, you know, in Ireland, we, we were all this about, if, if you owned a house, you've made it. Made what? You made headaches for yourself, you know? 
So when the boom happened, we all went out there, including myself, and we, we, we got what we could. Because, you know, in the history of this country, really, we never had a, excuse the expression, a pot to piss in for many years. So when we had a pot to piss in, we took a bucket and we really pissed in it. Do you know what I mean? But it was thrown at us. And we were the ones that got the piss put back onto us. And we had to live with it. And I had to live with it. So I had a choice. I could put a rope around my neck, or I could get on with life my way. And I decided to get on with life my way. And I ignored the bankers, I ignored the banks, I ignored people that put me in that position. Society. Because I grew up in that environment that says, if I own the house, I've made it. And it nearly killed me. And I know many people that have killed. So this, this, this money, this, this confetti, as, as David calls it, and all this sort of art around the walls and that, is an expression, really. That's all it is. It's a lot of frustration. It's a lot of anger. And it's, it, it's turned into beauty. It's turned into color. It's, I, you know, I hope nobody buys a pain nobody tonight. I don't want to give them away. <laughs> I like them so much. You know what? I really appreciate your support here. So put your hands in your pockets and give us room. <laughs> to say, a friend of mine's paintings here on the back here, Paul sitting here, he brought them this evening just to show off. So <laughs> thanks for coming. <laughs>